Hola amigos, welcome back to Hola Tejas. Right now we're switching gears and we're going to be talking to Mark Gonzalez. He's a candidate for District Court 148. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing well. Very nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. And tell our viewers a little bit about what you do now. Well, currently I am a criminal defense attorney. I represent anybody that gets accused of any kind of crime uh, from a class C misdemeanor all the way up to capital murder. Um, so that's currently what I'm doing. I've been doing that uh, for seven years from day one. I've been representing people who uh, sometimes couldn't afford to do so and people that have come in and hired me. So that's what I've done for the past seven years. Okay, and talk to me and, and tell voters why you decided it's time to try and be a judge. Well, you know, when you go into the courthouses, and, and I'll be honest with you, um, when you even look at the lawyers, there aren't many attorneys out there that even look like me. Um, you know, young, Hispanic, uh, it's just not there yet. No, 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 don't get me wrong, it's progressing. You're starting to see more guys that look like me and, and some guys that even look, uh, um, you know, more like the community. Uh, but what I've noticed is, is that there aren't any young people really on the bench. Um, and, and I think that just because you're young doesn't mean that you're not qualified to render decisions that can affect these people's lives. I mean, I have tons of friends from all walks of life, uh, and the people that I've represented, you know, I can relate to them, and, and I've got to form relationships with them, and I say, you know what, um, someone who's rendering judgment should at least have that perspective, a fresh perspective on the lives that they could affect, uh, taking into account, you know, first off, the victims, make sure that, that their rights are protected, and then also into consideration of the community, uh, but also at the end of the day, too, there's a defendant who you have to... Uh, consider as well so you have to take all those things into consideration and at least at this point in time I think that uh, it's time to shake things up it's mm -hmm. time to get a, a new outlook uh, at least in that courthouse and hopefully in every office across Texas across the United States um, you know there's so many of us out there whether you're a Latino whether you're African-American whether you're white whether you're Asian uh, what, whatever ethnicity you are um, even the the ages you know from 18 to 65 uh, they're just not getting involved and I'm hoping that maybe if, if I come out and I ask for your support uh, someone's gonna say hey you know what that guy's doing it maybe I should do it or that guy this time I'm actually gonna vote because you know he's running um, so that's why I feel you know if uh, that's one reason why I want to run for this position and that's another reason why I want to ignite some kind of fire to get the youth uh, and normal people that wouldn't come out to vote Okay, and we were talking just before the shoot about how your experience specifically with criminal law uh, could be a real benefit for you. Well, at least regarding uh, the primary, my opponent, uh, he's a, a corporate attorney, uh, and, and you know I respect uh, respect him and the work he's done, and he's done it for a long time, and and I think he has a beautiful family. Uh, but that court is, is the the people's court. Uh, the bulk of of that work is seventy percent criminal law. I mean. Every day you're going to render decisions that affect somebody who's accused of a crime. And if you have no experience in that, it's going to be hard to determine, okay, what program do I give this kid? Do I send him to prison? Do I give him an opportunity to prove himself to the community? Uh, does he have a drug problem? What programs are going to work to ultimately benefit the, the guy who's in trouble, the community who's at risk, and the victim who got hurt? How do we make everybody whole? If you don't have that uh, experience, whether you've been doing this one year or 25 years, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you. And talk to me about your campaigning experience. What have you been doing? Well, we're at every taqueria, we're at every flea market, uh, you name it, we'll be there. Uh, you know, I think that word of mouth is the best way to do it. You know, I'm an attorney. The way I get people to hire me is I've done a great job for their friend. And when they get in trouble, what do they say? Hey, man, I got in trouble. Call this guy. He's good. Uh, that's the way I want my voters to be. I want them to say, you know what, uh, I saw this, this lady, she was wearing a uh, Mark Gonzalez shirt and she was over there or my tia has a shirt or there's a, a, a bumper sticker. We're going to be everywhere. Uh, you know, I want an underground type of, of campaign. I want people walking around at the mall wearing my shirts. I want people walking around at the Trade Center uh, wearing my shirts. I want people everywhere you could think about uh, just saying, hey, vote for Mark Gonzalez. He's one of us. Uh, let's get one of us elected to that bench. And if I could do that, uh, I mean, that, that would uh, imagine seeing things change, you know, our voices actually counting and they do count. They just people don't get out and vote. Why not? You have that power. Why shouldn't you use it? OK. And talk to me about what you can offer voters. What are you going to do for them? Why should they vote for well, you? Well, normally in a district court, people say, well, you know, my 
people complain about an array of things. But in a district court, the only way I can really have an effect on someone is if you come before my court. Number one, it'd be a criminal case, a felony case, or there may be a child custody issue or a divorce family law, or you have some civil cases. Um, you know, and I can think that I can have a direct impact on everyone that's been involved there. Um, you know, in my criminal experience, I can say who's come through there and, and what programs may help them. And hopefully these young kids who get in trouble, that's the bulk of it. You have uh, minorities who are young, they get in trouble, and hopefully they see a guy like me on the bench who, who looks like them, who they can relate to. Maybe they'll say, you know what, I'm gonna do what this judge asked me to because I can, I can relate with this guy. And then also, and regarding family law, you know, um, I have a 12-year-old, a, a uh, she'll be 13 next week, which is scary, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, it was from a previous relationship, and so I understand the dynamics when you have uh, two different households who have to care for this one child and what it takes to make that a community, you know, and, and those are decisions that a judge and a district judge is going to have to consider, you know, two different families, what do you do with this child? I mean, those are very huge questions. Um, so that's the way I think I can make an impact on anyone who comes in front of that court. All right, and let's talk a little bit more about your age. You see people that are perhaps a lot older look at you and might not take you seriously. You know, uh, I've heard don't judge a book by your cover, and I've been that, I've broken that on every stereotype you could think of. Most people don't even think I'm, an, I'm a lawyer. Uh, and I've heard, hey, he doesn't look too judicial. How does a judge look? You know, I'd hope he'll look like me come, uh, come November and people will start to change. Hey, the, you can't judge a book by its cover. Um, you know, my youth, I don't see it as, as a, a crutch or anything that people should uh, to worry about. I mean, I'm young, I'm willing, I'm able. I'll work hard, I'll listen to you, I'll be there every single day. Uh, and, and I'll move cases. I mean, if my youth will only help me to, to work and empower everyone around. I mean, uh, I did my first capital murder when I was 29 years old. I'm 34 years old now. A capital murder is one of the, one of the highest degrees of, of, uh, of, of any crime that you can be charged with. I've done probably four capital murders since then. Um, you know, and those are the cases that a judge is gonna have to hear. I was named criminal defense attorney in 2011, uh, two th Criminal Defense Attorney of the Year, sorry, in mm -hmm. 2011, uh, by my peers who were all probably older than me. So gaining their respect in that aspect was one of the biggest accomplishments I've done. So I don't think if someone says, hey, look at this young guy, yeah, he's young. Uh, you know, I've been saying this since people want to hire me too. Well, why should I put my life in your hands? I'm looking at life in prison. Um, you know, I kind of relate it to basketball. We all heard of LeBron James. Who do you want on your team? You know, LeBron James was young. He's still young. Who do you want on your team? Um, so you want, you want the, the guy who's the best qualified, the best experienced, and the hardest player. Uh, and, and I think with my qualifications, that's me. I mean, uh, and I'm hoping to prove that to the community. Excellent. So you told us why you think that you should be judge for uh, District Court 148, but now tell voters something that they can connect with. Uh, I think the, the main thing is, just like everyone else, you know, I have a, a beautiful daughter that I care about. Um, you know, we do a lot of things together. I want her to, to, to be uh, very involved uh, in the things that I do. You know, we go hunting, uh, try to drag my wife out there sometimes. She's a, <laughs> a teacher uh, in Robstown. She's an eighth grade science teacher, so I know they, they work hard. But, uh, you know, uh, as well as, uh, you know, I, I ride motorcycles. I, I've been riding motorcycles all uh, since I was maybe like 17. I used to work on them. Being a lawyer was the first time I ever had an office job. You know, you name it, I landscaped, uh, built houses. I mean, this is the first office job I've ever had. Uh, but, you know, the main thing that people should know about me is that I'm just like them. You know, I'm a person from, you know, the razas out there. That's, that's who I am, mm -hmm. um, you know. And uh, I think that the, what people should know about me is that I'm accessible. Um, people are going to see me and be able to confide or, or put trust in me because they know that I can relate to them. Um, and, you know, the one thing that, that I want people to know is that um, win, lose, draw, whatever, if, if I can get one of them to come out and do something they probably wouldn't do, which is whether run for office or even go out and vote, I win. I mean, I don't lose this thing. I win just because you made uh, a, a decision to do something because I was doing it, you know? And, and like I said, if that happens, I'm a winner.
All right. Thank you so much. Great outlook on that. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, everybody. That was Mark Gonzalez running for District Court Judge 148. And don't forget, primaries are in March, but early voting is starts on February 18th. And you still have time to make sure that you are able to vote, get informed, and vote for the person that you think is right for the job. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Hola Tejas.